Well, hey everyone, uh, welcome to today's fun-filled, exciting mathematical video. What? I don't know what that means. Um, of sums and differences of mixed numbers. So this is what we've been getting into. We have been talking about these mixed numbers, right? Remembering again that fractions kind of come in three different forms. We have fractions themselves, which are made up of like unit fractions. Okay. Uh, we have top heavy fractions, which then are fractions in which we see like our numerator becoming larger than our denominator, which again then tells us that these things are larger than one. These tend to be smaller than one. And then we have our mixed number, which again is just a mixture of a whole number and a fraction. So this, for example, would be three wholes and three fifths. So three and three fifths or three and then three out of five. That's a lot of threes. Let's do another example. That was a lot. Here you go. So this would be two wholes and one fourth. So two and one fourth. So we've been talking about mixed numbers. So again, if this doesn't make sense to you, I always encourage you to go back and check out the other videos around mixed numbers and top heavy fractions. So those make sense to you, but we would like to move forward today talking about the sums and differences of mixed numbers. So again, a sum, meaning the answer to an addition problem and a difference, meaning the answer to a subtraction problem. So we're gonna kind of talk about what are some of the things you look at or to look for, or look for, I would say more than look at, you kind of look at everything with your eyes, but things you should be looking for when you approach some of these, because they can start to get a little tricky if we're still not sure what it means about getting to the whole or having a whole number, okay? So let's dive in. Uh, early example of some of the things we would, we've would we been doing, right? Maybe we would have something like one and um, two fifths, and we're gonna add one and one fifth. So this is what we've kind of already started to work with. And again, we know the number one rule we've really been studying so far is that we cannot find a sum or a difference unless our denominators are the same. Denominators are the same. Right, because that just allows us to put the pieces together. And again, that is another concept that if you're not sure about that, check out our other videos that support this concept. So knowing that our denominators are the same in this case, they both are five, then that allows me to put my pieces together. So we have a couple of approaches to this. Like one, I could kind of think about, well, what does this look like if I model this? Well, I see I have one hole, so I'm actually just gonna have one hole. And then the denominator tells me that that one whole is cut into five pieces. So two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. And because it's a whole, I have all of it. So I would shade it all in. So here's my one whole. And then I have the second part, which is two fifths. So again, we're gonna have, maybe go back to putting that in the same color. We are going to have a second model that represents two fifths. And again, two of those pieces are shaded in. So that's what this looks like, right? That's one and two fifths. And then in addition to this, and we'll change colors, then we have this model over here, which is another hole, again, cut into five pieces. So one, two, three, four. And then a second part that is also cut into five pieces, but only one is shaded. So let's do this quickly. So here's one hole. So this whole thing is shaded. And then I have one here. So if we really think about what we can see, well, one thing's for sure is I understand now that I see I have one hole here and I have one hole here. So one plus one, that's going to get me two holes. I need to create a little space over here. Oh boy, hold on, hold. Oh boy, technical difficulties. Here we go, there it is. So I got my one hole plus my one hole, that gets me two holes. And then I have here 
two out of five. And over here, I have one out of five. Well, if I was to compare or combine those two, right, I could really just think about, oh, I'll take this one fifth from over here. I'll just shade it in over here. And this now shows me I have three out of five. So this would give me two and three out of five. Now, this is the work we've already been doing. This works out really good. This is nice. Our mixed numbers are playing nice. We're having fun. Yay, this is all working. We all go together. Yay. Not always the case. Um, and that's still a yay. Don't worry. It's not like they're mean. It's not like there's mean mixed numbers out there. Like, oh, I'm a horrible mean mixed number. No, it's just that sometimes we just have to be aware of what happens as we start to put our mixed numbers together. So let me show you what we're talking about with that. An example may come up with something like this. Well, uh, you know what? Let's go with force, just because I was, I didn't want to cut things into bit. So we have three and three force, and let's go ahead and add uh, one and three force to that. Okay, so if we start to break that apart and think about what we have, right, we could do a quick model of this, and I'm going to do a quick model, so I don't even know why I said I could, because I'm going to. Now, one thing I see here is this is a three, so what we get as we start to understand is that we really don't always have to go and color everything in and go crazy. Like what I know is this is three holes. So I'm going to do a quick model here, right? Here's one, two, three holes. But then it's my next section, right? My three out of four that I have to be careful with what I shade and what I don't. So in this case, I have to cut it and shade in three pieces of it. I don't like that. Let's shade that in a different color. Sorry. It's a little confusing if you don't see the other colors. Okay, so this would be three and three fourths, right? And again, over here, I just shaded. I didn't cut it because it's a hole, but I did shade the whole thing. And, and then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna model this one hole right here. And then we have another three out of four here. All right, cool. So if I think about that model itself, the first thing I can do is I can add my whole numbers together. And I see that I have one whole, two, three, and four, right? Does that make sense? One whole, one whole, one whole, one whole. So one plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus one is four. So I have four holes. Now I need to combine my two fraction parts. So this is the next part where we start to think about what we understand about top heavy fractions, mixed numbers, unit fractions, fractions greater than one, like how all of this goes together. So I am combining three out of four with three out of four. Again, my denominators are the same, so I can totally do that. And that's the only way it's gonna work for me. But what I notice is if I did the technique here, where like maybe I crossed this one out and shaded in over here, well, that makes another hole, but I still have these pieces over here, right? So, that would actually make sense because now if I just remove that from here, right, I'm just going to shift it over and I ended up putting it over here. Well, this makes actually, oops, sorry, this makes actually my fifth hole. So I actually don't have four holes. So I'm going to go over here and change that to five. And then what I see is I actually have two out of four left over. Okay, so that was kind of like a crazy sloppy model going in there. Let's look at this exact same problem if we just thought about what we know about fractions. Like the models are always great. I always encourage modeling, model, 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 do it all day. It's all good. But what if uh, three and three fourths and one and three fourths? So what if we just talked about what we knew about, no, oh no, three fourths, about adding fractions in general. We've been doing them. We know if the denominators are the same, then we just slide that denominator over and then we just add our numerators. So again, I'm gonna go back to just adding my whole numbers first. This was a technique a lot of you have talked about in class. Just take your whole numbers and put them together first. So three plus one is four. And then again, my denominators are the same. So that just slides over, that doesn't change. And then I'm gonna add my numerators. Three plus three is six. Now, at first we would look at this and say, yay, we did it. But if you remember when we looked back at this answer, we actually ended up with five and two fourths when we modeled it. But when we come over here, we have four and six. Wait, huh? 
okay, so this something's not quite working here. And this is what I'm talking about, what we need to look for. All this math is correct. But one thing we need to understand is that we can't really put fractions together in this way. I have a whole number and then I have a top heavy fraction. So that's actually not even a mixed number. That doesn't even make sense. This is just like a weird Frankenstein's monster of fractions. So what I can do here is really stop and think to myself and say, oh, well, actually this six out of four, right? This six out of four is actually the same thing as one and two fourths, right? And again, this is talking about how we convert top heavy fractions to mixed numbers and mixed numbers to top heavy fractions. That is another video. So if you're not sure how I did that, I would super encourage you to go back and watch that video to make sense of that. So really what we're saying now here is that six out of four is equivalent to one and two fourths, meaning again, if I have one or four holes, and now I'm actually adding this one and two fourths, then I end up with five and two fourths when I put it together. Yay, five and two fourths. Yay, five and two fourths. So that's what's gonna happen sometimes is actually you can't just always add your whole numbers and then add your fractions and all is good and you move on. Sometimes when you add those fraction parts together, you're gonna end up with a top heavy fraction like we did here. And then that just allows you to convert that and add in the extra whole. I hope that made sense. If not, don't worry, because we're going to do another problem right now thinking about that idea. So let's say here I have two and seven eighths, and I'm going to add one and four eighths. Okay, so again, first thing we always want to consider, are my denominators the same? If so, then I can do the job I need to do. And yes, they are, they're both eight. Okay, so another technique people really like is, okay, well, first, since these are mixed numbers, I'm just gonna deal with my whole numbers first. So three, excuse me, two plus one is three. And then now, because my denominators are the same, right? I can just keep it and slide it over in a sense, right? Because there's still eight pieces, that doesn't change. And then I'm gonna add my numerators. So seven plus four is 11. Now here's where things go differently is because again, if you notice this here is a top heavy fraction. So I'm actually gonna pull this 11 eighths out and think to myself, oh, well, what is this as a mixed number? Well, again, what I do know from this is that eight pieces make the whole. So the whole would actually be eight out of eight, right? So that would be one. And then you can see here, I have eight, nine, 10, 11. I have three extra out of eight. So this 11 out of eight is the same thing or is equivalent to one and three eighths. So now what that is telling me is if I get rid of this up here, I'm actually adding to my three holes here this mixed number of one and three eighths, which again then means three plus one is actually four and three eighths. So that would be my final answer, okay? So I know these are always quick and if you're sitting here like, hey, wait, what? Pause, rewind. And also remember to ask questions and practice and go with it and maybe, you know, rewind this, write down the problem, pause the video, try to work it out, play the video again and see if you get the same answer. Those kind of things are always helpful. But now I'm gonna move forward because we're gonna see this kind of same problem pop up when we're working with subtraction. I know, right? That was just the sums and now we have to find some differences. So here's something I want us to be thinking about. We have two and one eighth and we are gonna take seven eighths away. Now, in this case, I have one mixed number and then I just have a fraction. Notice that's not a mixed number, it's just a fraction. And that's okay, because we still can do the work here. So. Let's kind of do our little trick of what we know. Okay, well, I'm gonna add my whole numbers. Well, there's no whole number here, right? There's nothing here, there's like a zero, but we don't need to write that. So two minus nothing is still a two, so I'm good there. And now my denominator is the same, so I'm gonna slide that over. And then we're gonna go ahead and take one minus seven, wait, one minus seven, wait, if I have, one thing, I cannot take seven away from it. 
So this is a lot like your decomposing that in math, right? Not even like, I don't even know why I said like, it is decomposing because this is the problem that occur in math is that we have to decompose some numbers so that we have more things to take away from it. So we write this problem and let's talk about what that is. Two and one eighth minus seven eighths. So two and one eighth minus seven eighths. Okay, so actually now that I realize that there's this problem, right? A lot like if it was a subtraction problem, let's even just say a 21 minus seven. Well, again, I can't take that seven away. So I need to deacon, give this 10 ones, and then I can do my work from there. But what we're about to do is different. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to decompose this two right here. Yeah, I am. Because I'm going to actually take a two away, and that's going to leave me with one hole. Now, one thing that I need to remember, take a two away, take one away from that. And that's going to leave me with one hole. And one thing I realized is the one that I took out is actually the same thing as eight out of eight, right? It's equivalent. One hole is eight out of eight. So I'm actually going to add these eights to this numerator, which means two and one eighth gets me nine or one, eighth, which is kind of funky because it goes back to what we were doing in the last problem. We're like, we don't want to do this. So why are we doing it now? Because if you look at what I can do, I now get to subtract one whole minus nothing is still one whole and then nine parts minus parts is actually two parts the denominator is the same and i get an eight out of that pretty great it actually works now i know that was just one throw at it so don't worry i'm going to do one more problem and then i want the video and i want you to try this one out and see if you can do it um and then what we'll do is we'll come back and solve it together and see if it makes sense and then again of course as always you know there's just in class to do the work and ask the questions so let's try this here's our next problem and again i want to encourage you to actually pause this and go try it and then come back and this is you coming back okay cool so I hope you gave this a go let's play around and see what we get we have three and three tenths and we're going to take away one and six tenths now one thing i'm going to notice right away is before i do any other work I notice that I'm going to start with three and I have to take six away. It does not work. It doesn't work. If I have three things, I can't take six away from it. If I have $3, I cannot go in the store and buy something for $6. Can't do it. So that means I'm going to decompose. I'm actually going to decompose one hole, which leaves me with two holes. Now, the hole I out is actually the same thing as 10 out of 10. So that 10 pieces that I just took, I'm going to add to my numerator, giving me 13 out of 10. And now I'm going to take what in six tenths. Now let's see if this works. Again, if I'm going to subtract, I need to make sure my denominators are the same. They are. I'm going to start with my whole numbers. I have two holes and I'm taking one hole away. So two minus one gets me one. And then I'm going to slide over my denominator because it is the same. And now we're just going to say 13 minus six gives me seven. So crazy writing all over the screen, what this really means is when I have three and three tenths, and I take one and say, I get one and seven tenths. Again, that's a bit of decomposing plot. Don't worry, there'll be more videos, there'll be more practice. This is just an introductory. It's day one, we're going to do this, and we're going to continue to practice this skill. So again, ask questions, practice, be active, and remember that math is an exploration, and math is the place to make mistakes, learn from them, move forward, and be okay with it. It's not a race. It's not about being right. It's about working hard to find a solution. So as always, thank you for your hard work. We'll catch you next time. I think, I hope so. You better come back. I don't know what this voice is, but now I'm ending the video. Bye.